The date is April 28. This is the Wednesday edition of the News on PBCJ. I'm Gabrielle Thompson. The Ministry of Health and Wellness has increased surveillance activities across the island following a rise in cases of dengue fever. According to the Health Ministry, as at April 1, there were 10 cases of the mosquito-borne disease, a slight increase over last year. Symptoms of dengue fever include belly pain, tenderness, vomiting, bleeding from the nose or gums, vomiting blood or blood in the stool, feeling tired, restless or irritable. The government intends to introduce a social pension program this year. The program will begin by targeting seniors aged 75 and over. Labor and Social Security Minister Carl Semuda made the announcement while making his contribution to the sectoral debate in the House of Representatives on Tuesday. The move forms part of the government's $100 million promise to assist the poor and the vulnerable. Our reporter Marlon Samuels was in Parliament and filed this report. In making the case, Minister Samuda painted a bleak picture for the year that was 2020. He highlighted the challenges brought on by the COVID-19 pandemic as well as natural disasters. Not only have we had to face the pandemic, which is bad, but also the flood rains from October to November 2020 resulted in varying degrees of damage to 114 dwellings in over 60 communities island-wide. The minister said that $100 million has been earmarked for social assistance to the poor and vulnerable in the 63 constituencies across the island. And so we have set aside $100 million to be provided for members to identify and be able to give support for the poor and vulnerable within their constituents. I must point out that on no account will a recommendation be accepted unless it is coming over the signature of a member of parliament. He outlined and planned distribution of the social pension scheme. Very thankful for allocating $800 million for the social pension program this year. The first phase of the program, which begins on July the 15th, targets seniors over 75 years who are not in receipt of a pension, disability benefit, or other retirement benefit or income. These persons receiving cash grants from PATH, poor relief, when they reach the age of 75, will be transitioned to the new program Beneficiaries of this program must also not be residing in a government institution run by the Minister of Local Government and Rural Development. But there must not, as a provision of this grant, they must not be resident in a government finance institution. And for that, they will receive $3,400 per month. Minister Samuda was making his contribution to the 2021-2022 sectoral debate in the House of Representatives. For the news on PBCJ, I am Marlon Samuels. Help is coming for Jamaican parents. The Child Protection and Family Services Agency, CPFSA, is planning a good parenting campaign aimed at encouraging good parenting techniques within the society. State Minister in the Ministry of Education, Youth and Information, Robert Morgan, shared some details of the plans and more at the CPFSA's virtual quarterly press briefing recently. Simone Absalom Gale has that story. Minister Morgan says the campaign will include a public education component for parents to understand the rights of a child and where they can get help when they don't know how to cope. The aim of the campaign is to encourage good parenting techniques within the society with particular focus on dealing with the issue of corporal punishment. We believe that we should build them up, don't beat them down. He notes renewed calls to address the issue of violence in general and violence specifically targeted at vulnerable groups such as children. 
He's suggesting that the change begin at home. Our duty as child care advocates and professionals is to craft the necessary policies to ensure that the society is led in a positive way towards behaviors that contribute to the holistic development of all persons within the society. Another way to properly manage the socialization of children is to place those turned over to the state with stable families. The CPFSA's From Cribs to Loving Arms campaign is set up to do just that. It complements the ministry's push to keep children from zero to three years out of children's homes. We believe that the capacity exists within the foster care system, within the system where persons who are prospective adopters to place that child in the arms of a loving family. So we call it from cribs to loving arms. The fact is a child zero to three requires a significant amount of attention and care and love. And based on all the studies that have been done globally, a child care facility is not the best place for a baby. As for those a little older but displaying delinquent behavior, he says submission has been handed to cabinet to amend section 24 of the Child Care and Protection Act to remove judges' discretion to place them in penal institutions. Not every child who goes before the courts is a criminal. Some of them are runaways, which is not a crime. Some of them are truants from school, which is not a crime. Some of them are engaging in certain physical behaviors with other children, which is not a crime, depending on the circumstances. However, the law currently allows a parent to bring a child before the court and tell the court that they are unable to control this child. And in some cases, that court has the, used the discretion to say, well, if you can't control the pitney, we're going to send him go on this place of safety or a penal institution. For the news on PBCJ, I'm Simone Absalom Gale. Opposition leader Mark Golding tabled a private member's bill in Parliament on Tuesday to amend the Constitution to allow for the impeachment of members of the House of Representatives. Madam Speaker, I hereby seek the leave of the House to introduce a private member's bill entitled the Constitution Amendment Impeachment Act 2021. Is this the wish of the House? Aye. Aye. Leave granted. The move comes even as there are increased calls in some quarters for the passage of legislation to remove members of parliament deemed to have fallen out of the public's trust. There is a demand for organic personal care and cosmetic products and the Scientific Research Council, SRC, is set to capitalize on that market. That's the word from new executive director of the SRC, Dr. Shara Watson. She was speaking at a recent JIS think tank. SRC Executive Director Dr. Shara Watson says they have been offering training, seminars and workshops to teach persons about how to make their own cosmetics. But now they're about to do more in the area of development and production. And a lot of our clients have gone on to do so in their own spaces, but there are still quite more that we can do. So in that regard, the SRC is actually building out a pilot facility to offer support to these entrepreneurs who want to make cosmetic products. Dr. Watson says the initiative should come and stream by the end of the first quarter of this financial year. She says the SRC continues to offer service and support to persons trying to engage the overseas market. Through our FDA filing services, which I know most persons are familiar with. So our manufacturers not only get a step into the local market, but through our support, they can also enter the international markets. The new plant is an addition to the entity's food pilot plant which supports the nation's farmers and food processors. So we really want to add on what we have been doing and doing well over the years and to really improve on the service delivery as well as to 
see how we can enhance those offerings and look at driving more, what we call it now. We want to look at more high value science um, that can have a greater impact. The Scientific Research Council has been driving development through the application of science and technology since the 1960s. For the news on PBCJ, I'm Simone Absalom Gill. Former senior superintendent of police Renita Adams has been hospitalized after testing positive for COVID-19. According to sources, Mr. Adams says he's symptomatic and is on a ventilator. The 71-year-old recently fell ill at home and was taken to hospital. And after a battery of tests, he was found to be positive with COVID-19. Mr. Adams retired from the Jamaica Constabulary Force in June 2008. General consumption tax returns for March are due on Friday, April 30. We cover this story plus other key market news in this business report. GCT returns for the month of March are due on Friday, April 30, 2021. The Tax Administration Jamaica TAJ says this is in keeping with the requirement for registered GCT taxpayers to make their monthly GCT returns and payments on the last working day of the month after the end of the taxable period. Therefore, GCT returns filed and paid after the last working day of the month will be considered late and the necessary penalties and interest charges applied. Taxpayers are reminded that they have several other payment options at their fingertips. These include via TAJ's tax portal using a credit card or any banking card with credit card features. The National Commercial Bank's online platform by adding TAJ as a payee. Using the Bank of Nova Scotia's automatic direct deposit via TAJ's website or via the tax authority's new direct funds transfer process. Additionally, all business persons registered to collect GCT are reminded that they must file their GCT returns online via the TAJ's portal at www.jamaicatax.gov.jm. This means that GCT returns for all categories of business persons must be filed using TAJ's online facility as these returns will not be accepted at tax offices. Business persons can receive support to file GCT returns online through TAJ's Customer Care Center at 888-829-4357. In Tuesday's trading session, the JSE Combined Index declined by 48 points to close at over 400,000 units. Overall, market activity resulted from trading in 96 stocks, of which 45 advanced, 39 declined, and 12 traded firm. The Junior Market Index declined by 23 points to close at just over 3,000 units. Stocks advanced for AMG Packaging and Paper Company Limited, Burrita Investments Limited, and Berger Paints Jamaica. Stocks declined for Caribbean Cream Limited, Caribbean Flavors and Fragrances Limited, and Caribbean Producers Jamaica. Trading firm were 1834 Investments Limited, Access Financial Services Limited, and Cargo Handlers Limited. Future Energy Source Company Limited Ordinary Shares was the volume leader with 13.5 million units, followed by Trans Jamaican Highway Limited with 2.6 million units and Caribbean Flavors and Fragrances Limited with over 2.6 million units. In foreign exchange trading for Tuesday, April 27, the U.S. dollar sold for an average $154.82. The Canadian dollar ended trading at $125.70. The pound sterling traded for $215.77, and the euro sold for an average $190.50. Oil prices were steady on Wednesday as support coming from forecasts of a recovery in global fuel demand was tempered by a surge in India's coronavirus cases and rising U.S. crude inventories. Brent crude futures added 51 cents to $66.93 a barrel. West Texas intermediate crude futures gained 60 cents to $63.54 a barrel. In this week's Living Healthy, Dr. Heather Dawn Lawson Myers speaks with Hewlett Gordon, Executive Director of the Jamaica Cancer Society. This is the second of a two part look at how this prevalent illness can be prevented and effectively treated. 
Hi, I'm HD and I am over 3,000 feet above sea level here at Halliwell, one of the must see places when you come to Jamaica. It's in the Blue Mountain Range, just at the border of St. Andrew and Portland. And today I have a question to ask you. Did you check, check? Hi everybody, this is my friend Hewlett Gordon, the Executive Director of the Jamaica Cancer Society. It is, it is important that one understands their risk profile and know how to take the necessary steps to prevent oral cancer from, from, from well, happening. Well, I'm glad you've touched on that yes. because there are actually two categories of oral cancer. Now, we've always known about the oral cancer that you're more likely or more susceptible to get yes. if you drink a lot of alcohol yes. and smoke tobacco. Yes. That basically affects your oral cavity, yes. your tongue, your cheeks, and the, and, and, um, the soft tissue in your mouth. Yes. But now we have an oropharynx cancer yes. that's basically in your throat, back of yes. your tongue, that is relatively new. Yes, yes, um, yes. The cancers that we've traditionally dealt with, the mm -hmm. oral cancers, are on the decline. Yes. And I think that's because people are getting smart about quitting smoking yes. and, and, and there's more and those education things, more there education more yes. but the throat cancer is on the rise Absolutely. it's connected to the HPV virus Absolutely. and depending on your sexual behavior yes. it's possible yes. that yes. you may be affected yes. with yes. that and i'm glad that you raised that because that is so true right we are learning more, there is more awareness now about the human papilloma virus than ever before because of increased public education and the fact that we now have a national vaccination program exactly. for the prevention of HPV. Yes. And what we are seeing happening is that young men and women are engaging in sexual intercourse much earlier, earlier mm -hmm. than traditional um, families so we need to get the so word out we need to get the word out right so we need to one practice safe sex use a condom okay limit the number of sexual partners right and get tested for HPV because, because the because the virus is so common out there it is in fact the most commonly transmitted sexual infection and really? be, yes and because it is so common we would like to use this opportunity to encourage the public to get screened for HPV. So we have been encouraging the women to get their pap smears done, you know, as a means of preventing cervical cancer. Yes. But now, with more awareness and education around the benefits of screening for HPV, we'd like to say to women 35 and over that in addition to doing the pap smear, get the HPV, HPV test done as well. And for those, those, those individuals that, are, that have not been exposed to the virus as yet, they've not been sexually active, please get the vaccination. They said that the efficacy of the vaccination, even if you have been sexually um, expo ex active, sorry, can, it is the efficacy of it still is strong up to age 25. Okay, so there okay? we have it. So please, get the vaccine or get tested for HPV. And one more thing I want to say, if you're wearing dentures, take them oh, out at nice. night. Your, mm. your soft tissue is not designed to be covered and what can happen is that the tissue can undergo degenerative mm. changes. Mm. You don't feel any pain. Mm. So another healthy way yes. to prevent cancer is to take out your dentures at night. Yes. Take out your dentures, Get tested, yes. have the vaccination yes. for HPV, yes. have yes. your regular oral cancer screenings Abs done every six absolutely. months, and you'll be one absolutely. step ahead of the game. You um, agree? Um, what are some of the basic ones to Heather? What's a simple thing like flossing, your dental care? Well, oral no. health care will go yes. Will, yes. will go far beyond yes. what we can imagine. Yes, yes, yes. So yes. stay healthy. Stay healthy. All right. Stay healthy. So remember, the Jamaica Cancer Society is here to support you. 
If you have a diagnosis of cancer, make sure that your body is as strong as it can be. Have all the dental work necessary out of the way before you begin your treatment. Visit your dentist every six months so that you can have a complimentary oral cancer screening. And above all, keep healthy, brushing, flossing, and ensuring that bacteria is kept at bay. Listen, I'm here in Hollywell enjoying the view. Catch you next time. Facebook, YouTube, and our LFD website. See you next time on HD's Jazz. In news from across the region, we begin in Guyana. The country's chief justice Tuesday morning dismissed the election petition case filed by two supporters of the opposition APNU AFC who were hoping for the results of the election to be vitiated. Gordon Mosley has the details. The petition challenged the constitutionality of Order 60, which was created by the Elections Commission and paved the way for the recount of votes before a final declaration. In her ruling, the Chief Justice explained that the Guyana Elections Commission has the responsibility to independently supervise elections and can issue instructions and take actions as necessary when matters relating to the conduct of the elections arise. She pointed out that Order 60 is not unconstitutional because it was created to resolve a dispute, further explaining that if there was no dispute in relation to the conduct of the elections, Order 60 would then be ultra-virus. Thus, I've concluded that Order 60 is not ultra-virus the Constitution or Section 22. A combination of Article 162.1b and Section 22 conferred a power on GCOM to issue this order if GCOM considered it necessary or expedient to ensure impartiality, fairness and compliance on the part of persons exercising powers or performing duties on its behalf as regards the election process and the declaration of the results of the election. It is the view of the Chief Justice that Order 60, as promulgated under Section 22.1, can be construed as simply modifying the representation of the People's Act to provide a mechanism that allows for the recount to be conducted by expanding the recount provisions in the Act. She said it simply sets out the procedure for the recount of ballots, a power that GCOM possesses under the provision of the RPA. The Chief Justice said the Elections Commission did not amend any elections legislation with the issuing of the order, but merely supported existing legislations. So in issuing Order 60, GCOM did not, promote, did not purport to amend any legislation. If, for whatever reason, any person exercising powers or performing duties pursuant to Article 162, 1B goes rogue, so to speak, and does not follow the required provisions of the RPA and the directions of GCOM, it cannot be that GCOM must await the results they provide, sorry, must accept the results they provide and await the outcome of an election petition. Chief Justice George said the Elections Commission had an obligation to complete the elections process and had to address difficulties to complete the process satisfactorily. GCOM is meant to be and has to be in control of the process until satisfactorily completed. This is the ultimate power the GCOM has pursuant to Article 162. The Chief Justice has also ordered that the statements of poll and statements of recount that were lodged at the Supreme Court remain there until all appeals in the case are exhausted. The dismissal of the petition came as supporters of the APNU AFC were gathered outside the courthouse, although the ruling was handed down virtually. The supporters marched off in protest at the conclusion of the decision by the Chief Justice. Two election petition cases were filed in the aftermath of last year's elections. The first one was thrown out by the Chief Justice this over improper service. Increased security with the promise of a greater police presence is just one of the many benefits of the enhancements for Aria Pitta Avenue by the Urban Development Corporation of Trinidad and Tobago. Phase one of the Aria Pitya Avenue enhancements will see the construction of two multi-story car parks and will address accessibility, comfort, safety and convenience. 
Senior architect at Udicott, Marlon Charles, gave a detailed look of the proposed designs during the virtual public consultation on Monday. Mahalia Joseph Warden has more. Senior architect at Udicott, Marlon Charles, said the Aria Peter Avenue enhancement project is an upgrade of streetscape elements that will improve the walking experience of the avenue for pedestrians. We propose to upgrade the sidewalk so that it becomes a unifying element along the avenue, a connecting ribbon that conceptually and physically brings the activity of the avenue into one overall enjoyable experience. The concept is broken down into two main phases. In phase one, we propose to upgrade the surface finishes of the existing sidewalks and add greenery, shuttle stops, and garbage bins on both sides of the avenue, all along its entire length. We propose to construct gateways on the east and west ends of the avenue and provide temporary parking to facilitate park and ride to patrons. In phase two, the temporary parking will be replaced with two multi-story car parks to accommodate more cars. This phase will also see the introduction of a police post and public washrooms at Adam Smith Square. One key element of the enhancement will be the east and west gateways. This is our proposed conceptual design of the gateway that could mark the entry of Arpita Avenue at Bell Smite Street and Colville Street, respectively. This design consists of a steel truss that, spans, that clear spans 8 meters across the avenue and is supported on steel columns to form a portal frame. To express the culture associated with Aria Peter Avenue, Mr. Charles said silhouettes of common characters like the Midnight Robber and Moko Jambis will be added to the design. Mahalia Joseph Wharton, TTT News. And over in sports, Stephen Bomber Jones has been returned as president of the Jamaica Boxing Board. The development came out of last Thursday's annual general meeting held at the conference room of the Jamaica Olympic Association. Others elected were Xavier Leverage as first vice president, Margaret Christie as second vice president, Leroy Brown as general secretary, David Clark as assistant general secretary, Sonia Jackson as treasurer, and board members include Peter Richards, Deborah Lopez-Spence, and Clifford Brown. Jones took over the presidency in 2010. He said that this sport has been negatively challenged by the COVID-19 pandemic, but he was confident that it would rebound in a positive way in the near future. And with that, we call an end to today's newscast. On behalf of the production team here at PVCJ, we wish you pleasant viewing. Thank you.